and when I look at robots like that, I often like to think of them in a three-part uh, structure. And feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Uh, a three-part structure, uh, a sense, think, act robot. So a robot normally has three components in it. They can sense the world around them, the environment. Uh, the environment for a robot can either be, you know, the world around us or yourself. So you are not part of the robot, hopefully. You're not a cyborg. And so if you're pushing a button or um, twisting a knob or in some way interacting or touching the robot, that still counts as sensing because it's sensing you. And so you're part of the robot's environment. Uh, and then it thinks about what it has sensed. Um, so for example, if you push a button, the robot says, oh, what should I do now that my button's been pushed? And then after deciding what to do, it then performs an action. That might be beep, make like a sound, or flash some lights, or actually move. And so there are lots of different outputs that the robot, actions that the world, robot can have onto the world. So does that make sense? Yeah. OK, awesome. And so with that in mind, I'm going to show a video for you of a poetry robot in action. Um, it's of a poem called Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. And when you're watching it, I want you to think about what are the actions that this robot is performing? What are the outputs it has? OK? And there's only one sense, there's only one sensor, one input that it receives from the world. So you can also try to catch that too, OK? And we built a robot theater to perform the poem Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Enjoy. Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if I had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and, those are supposed to be little and would suffice. Out, but they kind of got stuck. So did anyone catch the, uh, the sensor, the thing that the robot sensed before it started? Yeah, so it actually had, they dropped, the boys dropped marbles on those little tracks that rolled down. And it caused a little flap to drop and cover up a light sensor. It was a really ingenious little thing um, that basically blocked the light from a flashlight that was shining, shining onto a light sensor that could tell how bright or dark it was. And that triggered the robot to start uh, reading the poem. And, uh, some actions, there are a lot of them. Anyone have actions? Yep, there are lots of blinking lights. Yep, they had little trap doors on motors. Yep, and they're spinning a column of fire, pillar of fire. Yep, lights. Uh, and there was also the sound, so that the spoken poem itself was actually recorded audio that they recorded on the computer, and then the computer actually played the audio clips. So there were a lot of different things going on with that robot.